The first shots of the film take us to the forest of Western Europe. The film's protagonist, Belgian Jew Gilles Cremier, walks along the railroad tracks. At the same time, we hear the voice of Gilles become interrogated about how many people were in the concentration camp. The film then moved to 1942 in France. Gilles is riding in a truck. He is asked where and how he was captured. Gilles answered that he was caught trying to escape to Switzerland. He is then asked where Gilles comes from. He answers that he's from Antwerp. He also answers that his father is a rabbi, but that he does not consider himself a Jewish believer. In the same truck, Gilles exchanges a sandwich for a book from a fellow traveler. He also tells him that he stole the book, for which he is accused of violating the commandments of the Talmud. The truck then arrives at a wasteland in the woods. The Jews are taken out of the truck and lined up and shot, but Jill manages to fool the guards. He poses as a Persian. One of the SS guards orders that Jill to be spared and tells them that Officer Koch needs a Persian. Jill is taken back to the truck. Then we are shown the concentration camp. In his office, Officer Koch reprimands Elsa Strumpf for a crooked diary of the census of the Jews in the camp. Jill is brought into the officer's office. Koch gets his hands on the book, which Jill exchanged for a sandwich. This is how he gets his new name in the camp, Reyaz Ajo. This is the name that Officer Koch reads out in the book. Next, the officer asks what mother is in Farsi, and then asks Jill to say something in Farsi. The hero begins to make up a new language as he goes along. Officer Koch believes Jill and assigns him to the kitchen to work as a cook. Then the two sergeants who brought Jill to the officer take him away and take him to the barracks. The next day, Jill finds himself in the kitchen where Elsa Stumpf reads him the strict rules of the job. During a break, one of the sergeants, Max, approaches Elsa and invites her to a dance in the evening, but she turns him down, recalling his affair with Jana Kraus. Max says she's past it. Jill comes out to the backyard where the servicemen are standing and pours out the kitchen scraps. Max exchanges words with Elsa and says he doesn't believe Jill is a real Persian. Jill himself, washing the dishes, repeats to himself what his made-up language would be mom and dad. Then he begins to think up names for the objects at hand, plates, forks, bread. Then Jill finds himself in Koch's office, and he tells him that after the war, he wants to move to Tehran and open a restaurant there. He shows Jill a plan for learning a new language, and then threatens that if he finds out that he is fooling him, Jill will die a horrible death. The protagonist begins to list words in Farsi, bread, spoon, fork. Later in the barracks, Jill continues to repeat and learn the invented words, which almost causes him to get beaten up by a capo. Then we see Officer Koch learning new words in Farsi. Sergeant Max comes into the officer's office and claims that Jill is not who he says he is, but the officer doesn't believe him. Then Officer Koch dismisses Elsa Strumpf for completing the diary, a task he is assigned to Jill. In anger, Elsa puts the hand of one of the imprisoned girls on the stove. The officer summons Jill and gives him the task of translating 40 words into Farsi by evening. Over dinner, Max and Elsa talk. The girls tell him that Koch has removed her from her position to fill out the diary. Then they figure out a way to get rid of Jill. They take him outside the campgrounds and order him to take out the garbage. Jill predictably escapes into the woods, finding himself free. There he meets an unfamiliar hunter to whom he tells him he must think up 40 new words in a language he doesn't know. Then Max sets out to find Jill. Jill returns to the camp. Koch sends him to his office and gives him an assignment to fill out a diary where he has to write the names of the new arrivals. And then, as Koch himself said, it would be time to learn the new 40 words in Farsi. The officer gave Cremier 45 minutes to fill out the diary. Then the protagonist had an idea. You can make up new words from combination of letters of the names and surnames of those Jews that he had to write down in the diary. Soon Koch returns, liking Cremier's handwriting, and then begins to ask Gilles for the new words in Farsi. Cremier has no problem naming them, as they are all written down as the first and last names in his diary. Koch lets Cremier go. In the next scene, Gilles pours the camp prisoners a prison fare and keeps repeating the words to himself. Officer Koch is then summoned to the Commandant, who asks why he is learning Farsi. The officer answers that after the war, he intends to move to Tehran, the capital of Iran, to join his brother. The Commandant wonders why his brother is not in the officer's personal file. Koch answers that he only learned that his brother had been living in Iran for a year. The Commandant gives Koch an assignment to prepare food in a kitchen for a cookout for his closest friends and relatives. Koch then leaves. Jill and the officer find themselves alone in the kitchen at night. Cremier is chopping vegetables, and the officer sits down at the table and starts asking Jill for the new words in Farsi. The action of the film then unfolds at a picnic where Jill continues cooking, and Koch asks him what a tree would be in Farsi. Cremier answers that the tree in Farsi is Raj, forgetting that he previously called bread that way. Koch also realizes this, which makes him furious and beats up Cremier. Then he tells his subordinates that he no longer needs the Persian. Cremier is transferred to the quarry. 
Sergeants Max and Paul spy Elsa washing in the shower in the evening. Max asks to take over for him the next day because he is going to the dance with Elsa. Jill, meanwhile, continues to work at the quarry. The hard work makes Jill lose all his strength. Elsa puts on makeup before going to the dance with Max. At the same time, Jana Krauss asks her who Elsa is going to the dance with. She answers that she is going with Max, which makes Krauss begin to cry. The exhausted Jill ends up in the barracks, where in a sickly delirium, he begins speaking in an imaginary language. The capo tells the German soldier that Cremier speaks in his own language, and that he mutters unfamiliar words under his nose every night. Officer Koch arrives at the barracks and parses the words he knows in Jill's delirium. After this, Cremier is sent to a hospital. Jill wakes up in an SS ward, where a doctor tells him that Koch has ordered that Jill be cured and given a hearty meal. Jill deliriously confesses that he is speaking in an imaginary language. As soon as Jill got better, he was called to Koch. He ordered a mini count, and then he apologized and gave Cremier his old things. Max and Elsa discussed over lunch the Commandant, with whom Elsa once slept. She also tells Max that the Commandant has a small penis. Their conversation is overheard by Jana Krauss, who reports what she has heard to Officer Koch. Officer Koch finds himself in the office of the Commandant, who asks to keep the Persian in his camp after all the prisoners have been sent east. The Commandant informs Koch that he has received a denunciation, that he is harboring a Jew who poses as a Persian and is Koch's secret lover. The Commandant asks that the Persian be quickly removed from the camp. Humiliated, Koch tells the Commandant about the rumors about him, which are spreading throughout the camp. In the evening, Jill asks Koch to speak to him in Farsi. In doing so, he politely convinces Koch that he is a real Persian. Koch informs Jill that he will be left on the farm while the other prisoners are sent elsewhere. In the morning, Cremier leaves the barracks for the farm, and the prisoners find themselves condemned to death. The Commandant comes into the kitchen and sends Elsa to the Eastern Front for being the one to spread these rumors. Cremier soon returns to the barracks and is met at the entrance to the camp by Sergeant Max, who tells Jill that he will expose him. Cremier walks through the empty camp, picks up a doll from the ground, and finds himself in an empty barracks. Winter is coming, and new people have arrived in the camp. Cremier finds himself in Koch's office, who asks not to call him by his rank anymore, but only offers him a good meal and gives him a couple of cans of stew to take with him. With this stew, he feeds two weakened Italian guys, one of whom turns out to be deaf and dumb. At the same time, a supposedly real representative of the Persian people arrives at the camp. Max rejoices, for now he will be able to prove to Officer Koch the truth. The guy that Jill helped find out about it. Max goes to the kitchen and takes Jill from there. He takes him to the barrack, to the Persian, but he is killed. In anger, Max nearly strangles Jill, but one of the Italian brothers confesses to what he has done and passes a death sentence on himself. In the evening, a conversation takes place between Koch and Cremier. Officers say that tomorrow, prisoners will be reassigned to a new location. But as long as Jill works for Koch, he has nothing to fear. At night in the barracks, Jill gives his coat to his surviving Italian brother and takes it for himself. The next morning, Jill leaves with a crowd of prisoners. This information reaches Koch. The officer runs to the formation, still far from the camp, and takes Jill back. Towards nightfall, the Soviet army came close to the camp. The leadership is told to leave the location and get rid of any trace of work in the camp and to shoot the prisoners. Koch runs after Jill into the barracks. They leave the camp together. Koch takes off his SS uniform and says he has a plane waiting for him in Tehran, where Jill himself can run anywhere. Then we see Koch arrive in Iran and speaks in an imaginary language, which of course no one understands. Meanwhile, Jill finds himself in a Red Army camp. He is asked if he remembers anyone from the camp, so Jill begins to list the names that make up his invented language. In this way, he lists 2,840 names.